now I know you can hear me. So thank you, Alex and Felipe and the amazing Fruta team for this uh, opportunity to speak here um, and your, for, for your hospitality in the last few days. So I'm here today to speak with you about Infarm. Infarm is an urban farming company uh, based in Berlin that is providing farming as a service. Before we get, before we start speaking about Inform, we want to speak about our approach um, for, uh, for how, and how we deal with the problem of the supply chain. So, how do we feed 9 billion people by the year 2050? This is a question that many people are asking. Um, many scientists are trying to figure out water supplies and uh, other supplies of food. But how do we feed more people by 2100 and even more? What do we, how do we really approach that problem in a way that is going to affect our grandchildren and even more generations to come? I think from we believe we are right now at the point in time that we need to make decisions that will be influencing uh, those systems in years to come. So one of our major problems right now is supply chain. Supply chain that has been basically um, decided by demand and supply. The prices of bananas and the prices of fruits all across the world are not being determined by the immediate plentifulness around cities, it's been, it's been determined also by the prices of commodity, fuel, labor costs, etc. So the supply chain is a major problem that we need to be facing uh, in order to look at that. And so at Inform, we started, uh, this is over there, that's Erez and Guy, they are two brothers. They have no, uh, they didn't have any prior knowledge in agriculture and uh, complex systems. And back in 2009, they went to Berlin, they bought, a, they bought a caravan and they started growing microherbs in the caravan and selling it to people in the cities. They mainly wanted to do one simple thing, they wanted to be self-sustainable, they wanted to be self-sufficient in where they are right now. So they started to look at ways for them to, to grow things in the city. Um, and the breakthrough came at 2016, after many, many years of challenges, um, when Metro, a supermarket chain in Germany, um, gave us the opportunity to do the first in-store farm in Europe. And so over there, as you can see, uh, we were growing the herbs and the, lettuces, and the lettuces that are being bought by chefs in Germany in the store itself. And after a short while, it became viral. There was seven million uh, views in YouTube and uh, very shortly Infarm became quite a famous company in Germany. And since then, we've been very busy in trying to see how we can apply a solution that can provide an idea of solving or not solving or providing some um, ideas to have a better supply chain. So I want to show you a short video right now of where we are, to right, where are we right now, and what are our ideas for the future.
So, yeah. It's a good music video, right? Um, so currently the farms um, we have right now deployed in 10 cities in Germany, Paris, and we're just running out to France and Switzerland as well, hoping to go to the UK very soon as well. Um, so I'm going to speak about the technology and the farms and how it actually works. And I think the most interesting thing about uh, our product is you must be thinking this is costing a lot of money, right? I mean, it looks quite posh. Um, actually, it doesn't cost at all. Basically, the, our financial uh, and commercial structure is that we lease the farms to supermarkets and restaurants. And all you need to do, basically, is to sell above 50% of the produce to start making a profit. We have a team of in-farmers, growers, basically, that come every four days to the farm, plant the seeds, and harvest the uh, plants. When they harvest the plants, they put it on trays that have water on the bottom of them. So even the harvested plants are able to stay for approximately three days in that um, uh, trays. Uh, the best, one of the most interesting things and, uh, that I want to speak about, we've been speaking a lot about, people are speaking here about zero waste. And I think what is interesting about this is that Infarm has created a solution that doesn't create any waste. Because, and you'll see after that, we have been building systems that are allowing us to basically devise the production for the capacity of the consumption. So the consumer, if he consumes less, we can produce less. And we are not being tangled by the supply chain. We don't need to box it in plastic. We, just, we can just grow less or grow more, just put another farm if needed. And so just to go really, really shortly about how we do things. So we collect 50,000 data points throughout plant's lifetime. Each farm acts as a data pipeline, sending information on plant growth and growth parameters to our central farming platform, allowing it to learn, adjust, and self-optimize. By connecting our farms to our central farming platform, we have created the first of its kind cognitive farming network. So the farms act as micro climates, adjusting wind conditions, and we have a wind tunnel in the center of every farm because we make sure to agitate the plants. Plants need to be challenged by conditions to create flavor. And we'll get to how our plants are tasting uh, later on. Um, we adjust humidity, temperature, and we monitor the plants so they can grow the best where they are, if it's in a supermarket that is in Zurich, which is a high place, or Berlin, which is flat land and quite low in terms of our atmospheric pressure. And that's one of the key factors that Infarm is able to do what it's doing. Is the actual, that's the actual structure, number one over there, of the square in every flat tray of the farms. It's been influenced by the bi biological structure of the sunflower. Um, and what we do basically, our growers, every time they come into the farm, they put stage one, which is the seedlings. And then when they come back, they move the seedlings to stage two and put another stage one. On and on until it gets to st uh, stage four and they, they harvest stand, uh, stage four. This is how we are able to adapt the production to the consumption. And that's the key idea of this logistical, se uh, of this, uh, logistical system. And so we also have farms in salad bars. There's one salad bar. It's not in this presentation. It's called Good Bank. And actually, it's a salad bar that and you can look it up in, a, in the internet. You put Good Bank and you just get there immediately. It's a salad bar. And on the, on the back on the wall, there is Inform Farms. Someone wants to, to eat, a, eat a salad. Then the guy that is working there just turns around, harvests the lettuce, and makes the salad for you. So the idea is also how does plants taste when they are being eaten still alive. So it's an amazing, uh, it, it, it's very good quality. We're, it's not, you know, we're not trying to compete with farms. That we, we're supporting that. We're trying to create a solution for urban systems. And by the way, I forgot to mention, 60% from mankind will be moving into cities by year 2030s. So that's another major factor of the way we look at things. Our seeds are uh, non-GMO and untreated organic seeds. We have 0% pesticides, and uh, we really try to make this product as nutritional and as healthy as possible. 
And right now, as I told you, we have over five, we have over 250 farms in Germany, and we are growing. We produce our own farms. That's our major challenge right now, which will be solved very soon. But because we produce our own farm in a factory the size of four football fields, we just don't have enough to roll them out across Germany right now. Also, um, we are thinking of ways to make people eat more herbs and lettuces because this is our product. So we're thinking how we can create innovative ways to use more herbs and different herbs. The challenge is how do you m make people eat Greek basil and citric basil? People in mainly in, in, in states, they don't know anything about it. So we try to create new techniques and new ways to market those herbs in the retail chains, etc. And so as you can see, we have almost an unlimited range of products because basically we just need to get the seeds. So even if someone comes to us and says, I've been to Japan, it's an amazing plant there. If there is access for a seed, we can grow it in the location of consumption. And our expanding catalog is basically, we can grow 60 kinds of basil, 20 kinds of parsley, all varieties that are available in the various seed banks and seed companies across the world. One of the major marketing activities we've been doing is actually looking how we can communicate effectively the difference between citric basil and Greek basil and Genovese basil. So we are using uh, scientific methods to actually see the amount of sweetness, acid, bitter, umami, and flavors in herbs. And by doing that, we can basically start to communicate to customers what is the difference and how how do you want to, what kind of basil do you want today with your salad? But also what's interesting here is that when we work with chefs, we can start to actually influence the flavor and taste of a specific herb to the chef requirements. So we've been, doing, we've been doing a few projects with a few chefs, um, and the chefs come back and said, can we make that basil less bitter, that Thai basil less bitter? And we found by playing with the light frequencies, of the, L, of the LED lightings, changing the environment, we can actually, the chef can start cooking when he's growing the plant, and the farm is in his kitchen. So it really creates new solutions, um, new methods, and new techniques and flavors. And we develop a lot of recipes, and we have a restaurant inside of our HQ in Berlin, you're all invited. So we really try, our, our, our employees and ourselves, we eat our herbs all the time and we try to really look at the taste and how we can make it better. Um, me as culinary director, I get feedback to our scientists all the time because you, know, you might become confused and think that you're a high-tech company, but actually we are growing real food. And just before I finish, I want to show you a short movie of Tim Rao, who's a two Michelin star chef in Berlin that was one of the first chefs to adopt an inform farm. The restaurant Timrao um, is based on the idea of three different cuisines. It's um, the, the flavor world of Thailand, it's the techniques of Cantonese cooking, so the old heritage cooking in China, and it's the person um, of Japan. That means that we try to reduce the plate unless there is no more thing I can put away. Even herbs and cress and plants is nothing where we do a garnishing with. This makes it so important to us that these herbs are really intense in the way they are. The first time I met uh, Infarm was at, um, at one of the metro warehouses and the taste, the flavor was amazing. It was, it was as clear as you have a laser sword. So focused, so concentrated, and so pure, and I loved it. So in our in-farm farming station, we harvest sometimes a minute before we serve, and that is a different of taste. Maybe it's just three or five percent, but if you're on, on the top of your game, three or five percent is making the difference on the palate from outstanding to wow, 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 yippee, oh, yippee.
so we, yeah, it's. Um, The way this happened with Tim is that he came to a metro warehouse, we started speaking with him, and he said we've just been to Peru, and you've seen this Peru in Mint. And obviously, in Germany and in many other countries, you have access to about 12 different kinds of herbs, and that's it. You can get basil, parsley, coriander, etc., and that's it. Infarm, obviously, can, if we can get the seed, we can grow it for you. We can also start working out the flavor, etc. So we thought, yeah, sure, we can get Peru in Mint because it's available. And we started growing Peru in Mint, and it was very, very happy, and then we uh, put the farm in his place and the rest of history. The, um, the interesting fact about high-end restaurants is that we can train the chefs to actually harvest this, uh, the plants, but also the chef has a, uh, the, the possibility of really determining the spec of the leaves. So if you want to have a six millimeter basil, because the, the uh, plant is growing in a very, very, um, in a very uniform way, all of the basil will have six millimeter leaves. So you don't need to get your uh, cooks to start picking like the exact leaves and nobody's stressed. Also what's uh, very effective is that the plants are all super fresh. Or every, the quality of each leaf is exactly the same. It's exactly consistent, which is very helpful for uh, Mission Star chefs and fine dining restaurants. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much.